Hello, start again. Hi, I'm Mark Goldstein. I'm uh, chairman of uh, UCSF Health Hub, and UCSF Health Hub is a uh, brand new innovation hub up at, uh, at UCSF. Um, one of the things that we're doing is we're matching amazing early stage companies with entrepreneur, with uh, investors, with mentors, with advisors, with researchers, and doctors. And so Amy asked me to put together a group of three amazing precision health companies today. Now these are earlier stage companies. These are companies that have all just raised their seed money. There happen to be three truly amazing companies and when you think about everything we just heard from that first panel, I think you're going to hear a lot of, a lot of that will resonate when you, when you hear what these companies have to talk about. Who they are and what they're doing. Um, this is not uh, a demo day. There is no trophy or award given out. Um, these companies are basically going to give you a taste of what they're doing. But they're all here at some point. They're all going to be raising more money, so if you're new investors. Um, they're starting to uh, pick up uh, customers and clients, so they're ready. This is a great group. Um, they each have only four and a half minutes, so we're going to make it go very quickly. Um, and we're going to do some Q&A. Oh, Bambi's yeah, just cutting down to four minutes. Hey, Jeff, four minutes. You hear that, Garrett? Four. Now, uh, neither of these guys are going to be particularly good at keeping to their four minutes, but we have a, a, a good book. Um, look, there are great precision health exam examples of precision medicine, what they're doing, what Daniel talked about today. You're going to see that in all three of these companies. So well, first um, will be David. So David came here from, uh, from Montreal, and his company is called Optina. And what Optina is doing is Truly really fantastic. He's early detection of Alzheimer's. Thank you. So I'll try to live to the amazing uh, comment. Uh, so it's, uh, it's commonly known that the hive shows a lot of signs of disease. So at Optina, we took that principle further and we use a spectral imaging technology that gathers data rich uh, image of the retina. And we combine that to deep learning algorithm to find biomarker of disease. And our first application is the diagnostic of Alzheimer's. Uh, you know, one out of 10 will end up his life with Alzheimer's, so you all know it's a serious disease. Uh, uh, but the key, key issue with Alzheimer's is that the damage to the brain happened 10 to 20 years before any symptoms appear. Uh, a couple of numbers, we, this, beside the people that are already suffering from the disease, 8 million people are suffering from memory loss, some will evolve into an Alzheimer's disease, and there's 12 million people developing brain damage that will eventually develop, uh, leads to Alzheimer's. So, and the key issue is that today, the diagnostic is based on cognitive measurement. So we measure the cognition year after year, either to uh, paper test or now there's digital test. But that evaluates the cognition, and it takes on average 2.7 years to make a very inaccurate diagnostic. And while we're doing that diagnostic, the brain damage keeps occurring and, and the disease progress. We actually need the disease to progress to make a diagnostic because we make a probable diagnostic based on the evolution of the disease. There are a few people that have access to nuclear imaging. My previous company was developing PET scanners. Uh, and, and we can measure that brain protein that's built up in the, uh, in the brain, obviously, or we can do a, uh, a puncture in the back to measure the protein build up also over there. So our solution is a non-invasive scan, low cost, uh, that predict the brain protein accumulation the same way as we measure it by PET, but it's done in a few minutes with no injection of trace or any dye. So we've demonstrated our technology works uh, in multiple sites. Our, our round now allows us to expand our clinical sites with very great sensitivity and specificity. So um, like how we envision our test to be deployed is we, we start with people that have early symptoms or are asymptomatic for the disease. From the eye scan, we can then implement lifestyle changes that have shown in large clinical trial to reduce the impact of, of the disease by 25 to even 50% just by lifestyle changes, just by, it's not that easy, but 
Um, and we also implemented a uh, mobile apps and a dashboard for doctors to help them implement those lifestyle changes and re-monitor with the eye scan to see if the, 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 the changes are implemented correctly. So uh, our market scale strategy starts from KOLs, but our re real goal is to be in, in, in mass market, Walmart, pharmacy, where you can just get a quick eye scan for patients with memory loss, and eventually people, people that have no memory loss highlight the buildup of, of amyloid protein. So really we want to impact uh, Alzheimer patient from people that has uh, early onset of memory loss to help them better plan their life. A lot of studies have shown that you can save a lot of money from making that diagnostic a little earlier. And uh, one day we want to screen patient, asymptomatic patients that are building up amyloid uh, so they can make lifestyle changes to delay the disease or even avoid the disease completely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, this is a, that's a, just, it's such a great company. Um, next up, Garrett. I think you're the so uh, Garrett Rulin is the uh, CEO of a company called Biomarker. Biomarker is based up in San Francisco and uh, very, very different type of solution. Uh, very, very different approach and uh, I think you're going to love it. All right, thank you, Mark. All right, so. Um, we are a company that's maniacally focused on ending claims in the health and wellness industry. And given this audience, what we mean by claims are not insurance claims, but product marketing claims. What we believe are that companies that sell products to consumers, they shouldn't sell promising you what their products might do for your health. They should actually sell to you by showing you what their products are doing to their existing buyers. Now, personalization is on the rise in the US. We're seeing hundreds of companies coming up all trying to sell you product with unique methods, mostly through unproven science. Take a lab test and we'll find the perfect meal for you, the perfect supplement for you, the perfect cream or lotion. And the issue is, it's very difficult to even prove if that recommendation works in the first place. And this industry is continuing to grow. The majority of these companies work by using armchair science. They look at existing studies and then they promote it, but they're making money and consumers are buying these products. So Biomarker uh, aims to be the first company that allows a user to use their own health data to actually measure the impact of a purchase that they make. And we do so using a process called digital phenotyping. The way it works is we connect and integrate with over 400 popular wearable devices, lab services, medical services, fitness apps. A consumer can streamline all of that information to create this digital phenotype or unique thumbprint. So whenever they introduce a product or a controlled variable, they can see the delta on their own health. And what this ends up looking like is something like this. We use the principles of the scientific method. Company claims their product does something, well, that's your controlled variable, let's measure it. Then tell us how you wanna measure it using the data collection tools, and then you design a protocol around it. What this looks like from the consumer level is a list of studies where you can walk into a store and say, I wonder if this works. Biomarker can use the tracker on your wrist or any service you have to prove it. Ultimately, this creates almost a gamified research for the consumer. Buy it, use your own data, you believe it works, here's some information to actually show you. And on top of that, we help brands by de-identifying all of this user data and showing them how their products are impacting the health of their consumers. This helps them become both credible and sell products by showing the impact rather than promising. Now, on top of that, if a consumer doesn't have a device or lab test or genetic service or even the products to test, they can buy it from us. We've been in market for about two years, um, started off actually selling to large enterprise. What we found is when you offer the opportunity to personalize a product, sales really go up. And what we ultimately discovered was that there is a need for an independent third party that would provide answers both to the consumer and to the brand, but it was our own brand. So we're starting off selling in supplements. Why? Because 250 million Americans take supplements and there's no way to prove that they work. It's an easy market to address because there's no way to truly validate it yet. We then plan to expand into CPG, beauty cosmetics. With the data that we're gathering, our expansion would be into research and insurance selling these outcomes. We've uh, built some pretty strong relationships with some relatively notable brands, uh, both from the sports side, large manufacturers, and even the football club for Barcelona. All intend to use Biomarker to test out the latest fads on the market and see if they work for them using their own data and share the message. 
Our team has extensive experience not only in me medicine and AI, but in consumer apps and marketing. We're using the opportunity of consumer app engagement to make data a byproduct of use. Our advisory team also has a relatively extensive experience in the health and AI space, and including the CPG space. So, thank you. Okay, so very, very So now we're going to set a meet a little bit in the middle. Michael, are you? There you go. Um, this is a great company. So, so Remedy is a really fantastic new company. He's just got some great funding. Uh, he's going to talk about precision medicine as it relates to detecting. Thank you. So the goal of precision health is to target the right treatment to the right patient at the right time. The question I want to ask is, how do we scale that to 100 million patients? So for a subset of patients, we actually have a lot of information, including data. But the truth is, for the majority of patients, we actually don't have a lot of information about that at all. So I'm Mike Bean, co-founder of Remedy, who created a deep learning infrastructure platform to actually inform what information we should collect from each individual patient. And the first target use case is for us to screen patients for undiagnosed chronic diseases and rising risk. And the reason why we look at chronic diseases is because it accounts for about 70% of US healthcare spend. And yet, there's a shocking number of patients that are still undiagnosed today. And that's because many of the really important facts about the patient's health happen outside of the four walls of the health system. And before a patient develops acute manifestations or, or progress to the late stage, they actually have a few touch points in the health system. Now, how Remedy actually solves this is by using a risk based approach to collect more information about the patient at the right time. And what we do if we look at the existing array of information that's available in terms of EMR data, claims level data, um, we use that to create a suspect list or a chase list to collect more information. Because ultimately, even though we have a great team of machine learning scientists from MIT, including the author of the fundamentals of deep learning, we know it is not just an analytics model. It's also a data model. Because you can't run models on data you don't have the patient you haven't seen. So we use the next step, which actually helps you guide care coordinators through phone interviews to collect bespoke pieces of information about specific patients. And that informs who we should bring in for the next step for complementary diagnosis and additional tests if necessary. So let's zoom in on the guided health risk assessment um, piece. What we have here is after the first step of gathering whatever information, EMR claim, PBM, that we do have, that helps to inform what is exactly the first question we should be asking. And depending on the patient's answer, we actually update our intermediate differential diagnosis prediction to inform what is the second best question, third, fourth, and dynamically compose the user journey. And importantly, what we do is we summarize that information into actual next steps. And for us here, we also make sure that our deep learning model is fully interpretable, which means we understand not only what we are screening for, what the patient at risk, in this case COPD and CKD, but the specific signs and symptoms and clinical indicators to lead us to believe that why that patient has that disease. And the upshot of all of this is we end up directing clinical resources to the patients who need it most. Now, this simultaneously saves a lot of money and actually makes a lot of money for value-based health systems, so specifically for Medicare Advantage, Documenting and identifying the chronic disease burden of the patient actually increases their uh, PMPM payments that they receive from CMS. Uh, for accountable care organizations, that actually impacts the risk adjustment factor that impacts the cost savings benchmark, which CMS uses to calculate shared savings. So the order magnitude of $3,600 per CRP patient, $3,400 per CHF patient that is my here. That's just on the revenue side. If we look at the cost side, it's many, many folds more than that. If we include, um, for example, the UK DDP study and the uh, US study by Millimens on the cost savings from diabetes prevention, which showed about 56 to 109 PM PM cost savings for early intervention. So we actually follow a partnership model whereby we only charge based on successfully finding things that the existing healthcare system did not already know about. If we don't, we don't charge anything else. But for the average population, 
within an ACO or MA plan, we actually estimate a cost savings or value uplift uh, of $2,600 PMP1. And our business model allows us to keep 10% of that. We've done some excellent studies, both in terms of the classification of diseases we look at, as well as looking at our performance backtesting of NA's data set on asymptomatic diseases, including uh, early stage CKD, stage 1 through 3, and diabetes. And I'd love to tell you a lot more about that and run you through a live demo. Um, if you'd like, please email me at mike at remedymedical.com. Thank you. Why don't you, uh, why don't all three of you come back, come up here. Uh, we've, got, we've got time for three or four questions. Um, so, bring on the questions to Flora and Cooley. Start the three of them on Twitter. Okay. Like, why did you start this business? Biomarker. You know, um, testing whether some of the existing um, interventions that we're doing in this space is useful, and um, how would you, I guess, integrate your system into that? Absolutely. So the way we're actually designing our model is, you know, we, we really don't discriminate between the difference in, in the dietary input. So whether it's a medication or it's an OTC weight loss pill, we're simply measuring the delta to the consumer. So some cases that we actually have running now are sleep studies for consumers that currently have a prescription to Ambien and they have access to uh, cannabis, and they have access to Dreamwater, one of the examples. And they're actually running their own personal studies trying to see what nights they get better sleep and what the outcomes are with their own data. So we actually intend to train our model in an area that's not regulated without having to go through the red tape and FDA approval just to get data from consumers that's already being generated. And then use that system to then say, we found some new discoveries that we can accelerate or fast track for real research and ideally introducing a complementary medicine and seeing how OTCs and supplements are interacting with certain medications. So when a patient goes to their clinician and says, I feel great or I feel terrible, there's a little more data there to, to validate that claim. One more question for you. Uh, I do have a question. It's for Michael. Can you talk about some of the regulatory challenges you may have had of looking at the de-identified data then re-identifying and approaching it? To clarify the question, is that on the training side or the deployment side? Deployment side. Yeah, so we signed the AA with the Department of Health Systems for the Okay. And, and no one in the, uh, and I'm not insinuating they should, but I have known healthcare systems to wonder whether consents are needed for usage of that data. That's fair. So I think, um, think about that as you would for an EMR or for a population health company. So we have the tool level of access and we sign the same as the So we have that actually to push back the group is very similar. Okay. We soon need to be anchored in the care system in order to transact that VA. Yeah. Or, for example, if it's an MA plan, we can pull from the group to the point of to get direct uh, access to the Thank you. Great. Well, these are, these are three companies, three amazing companies. So if, if I'm going to invite all of you to join the UCSF Health Hub. So go to the website. If you want to go meet four companies like this uh, as, as investors, if you're an entrepreneur and you're looking for investors, um, come to the website. It's free. But these are these are the all-stars. We have three great all-stars, and then Bambi for another great event. And I'm going to uh, turn it over to you.